Hey, this is Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about Stillmeyer Games expansions. We have 15 expansions so far over the years, and we recently revealed and are shipping uh, Viticulture World. The retail release will be quite soon, the new cooperative expansion for Viticulture. And so expansions have been on my mind a lot lately, and I thought I'd discuss them today. And I will tag in, in, the, in the bar below so you can jump ahead if you want to jump to the list. It's not exactly a top 10 list. It's I will look at 10 different types of expansions, um, kind of from a design perspective, and then pick my favorite of those types among all Stillmeyer Games expansions. But before I get there, um, again, jump ahead to that tag if you just want to jump to that content. I thought I'd talk a little bit for a few minutes about expansions in general um, and whether or not I, it's essentially worth it for a publisher to do it. One of the main reasons that we do expansions, that we make expansions from time to time, not for every game, but from time to time, is and really the, the intent is always if we think we should make an expansion for the game, if we think the game and the fans of the game will benefit from an expansion. That's the core intent, and I think that's a, that's a worthy goal of making an expansion. Not to make more money necessarily. Um, it is nice if we can be profitable from an expansion, but really just if we can bring more joy to people who already have the game, um, we can make an expansion for it. And therein lies one of the, uh, the keys to an expansion, one of the things that I think about a lot. If we are primarily serving people who are already who already enjoy the game, are expansions any good at inviting new people into the game? I think in a very small way, the answer is yes. I think they can remind people that a game exists. So we did this for Between Two Castles in particular. Here's one that I'll talk about a little bit later. But Between Two Castles came out. Um, we loved the game. It sold okay, but it didn't sell quite as well as we thought. And it took us quite some time to sell through all the copies that we made of Between Two Castles. Um, and then the game kind of faded out of the conversation completely. And I thought, you know, why we have some room in the box to add uh, another insert of tiles. Why not design an expansion that can fit into the core game box uh, between two castles really well and um, ideally bring or kind of remind people that this game exists. And so in that way, for Between Two Castles specifically, it wasn't just serving fans of the game, but it was also to remind people that uh, that this game existed and that we really loved this game and we thought they might love it too. And so it was kind of a, a marketing tactic, really, to put out an expansion for Between Two Castles. But that isn't always the case. Um, so that's one thing I think about. Like, how, who are we, exactly are we serving through these expansions? Um, I also think about a little bit more about reviewers. I've had reviewers tell me, um, some of the bigger reviewers, um, tell me that they, they aren't really all that interested in talking about expansions uh, because they don't get as many views. Uh, and so part of that is a whole di different discussion about reviewers and, and, the, and the goal there. Is the goal to get more views or is, is the goal to serve your audience the best way possible? But I guess serving that is kind of answering the question itself. If, if you're getting a lot fewer views on a video, then maybe you aren't serving your primary audience. Your audience is telling you, hey, we're interested in discussions about games, not expansions. And so uh, that's interesting to me as well, that reviewers are seem a little less likely to spend their time on expansions, which they are in completely, that is completely within their rights to do. Um, but it's a good reminder to me as a company that you, that works with reviewers quite a lot as a, as a marketing approach, a way to, to share our games with others and let them have, make informed decisions about whether or not they want to buy our games and our expansions. Um, I have to think about that. Do, if, if we're making something that's less exciting for reviewers to talk about at all or to even accept, um, should we focus on expansions or focus on, and this is the other conversation topic, sequels. Sequels versus expansion. So essentially kind of, some people call them standalone expansions. I think sequel is a better, better term for that. But a game that reflects the original properties of the first game, but stands on by itself stands by itself. And maybe there are components that can carry over from side to side from, from with, between the, the two, or maybe it's a completely standalone thing versus expanding the core game. And expansion to me is always something that relies on the core game. You need the core game to play. You need the core game of Viticulture to play Viticulture World, uh, opposed to a sequel, which, uh, which stands by itself. I've talked to publishers even recently who just don't care about expansions at all. Um, they will only do sequels because they don't want someone to have to buy the original thing to get uh, to, to make the expansion valid, which I totally hear. Um, I can also see the side of it where if you are trying to serve fans of the original and those fans are asking for more content, they're eager for more content than, um, than an expansion that just simply expands the stuff that they already have so they don't have any, any element of redundancy um, can be a good way to serve them as well. 
The last thing, and I've talked about this in previous videos about expansions, is how well they actually fit into the box. Uh, Viticulture World, for example, the board in Viticulture World needed to be bigger than the Viticulture box. And so Viticulture World components do not fit into the core Viticulture box. And I, I don't think that is ideal in general. Generally, people want to fit everything into the same box, but it isn't always possible. Uh, you can do things like we, what we did with Between Two Castles. Is, is the, the challenge I gave to Ben and Matthew was it must fit into the box. Like, we will only make an expansion if it fits into a specific tray that we can fit in the Between Two Castles box. But that is a big design constraint. Sometimes such design constraints are, are helpful for designers, but sometimes that can really limit it. Like, if I had given myself that design constraint for Scythe, Scythe the Rise of Fenris wouldn't exist because there's no way this is going to fit into the core game box of Scythe. So... That's an interesting consideration. Like, do you, do you try to force an expansion to fit into the core game box? Um, or do you just try to design the best possible expansion and find a way for people to put it on their shelf in, in hopefully what is an appealing box, like the one for Viticulture World, or even make a big box then where people can either buy just Viticulture World or they can buy the wine crate and put everything together in that one box. All right, I've rambled on about general topics. Let's get into specifics and let's talk about the 10 different categories. And I'm gonna pick my favorite Stillmeyer game in each of these categories. So these are different types of expansions. The first category is that expansions that add a completely new play method. And because I have it handy, I'm gonna start out with Viticulture World. Viticulture World is my pick for this. Viticulture World makes Viticulture a cooperative game when you play with Viticulture World components. Um, Viticulture by itself is a competitive game Every other expansion is designed for competitive play. Viticulture World is designed specifically for cooperative play. Um, it adds a bunch of different continents that you can play the game in. It adds a new board. It adds a new, a slightly new worker placement method to the game. It still resembles the original, but it is a little bit different. And I think that is the challenge when you're designing an expansion that has a new play method. How far away from the core game do you go? Um, before it is, it really feels like a different game. Um, and I think we, we towed that line with Viticulture World, but I think we pulled it off. You can be the judge of that once you, once you uh, get your copy and share your thoughts on it. But yeah, Viticulture World is my pick of an expansion that we made that has a completely new play method. Um, and really, features is built around that completely new play method. It isn't just like a module within Viticulture World. Viticulture World itself is the new play method in the cooperative uh, play of Viticulture World. That's the first category. Second category is more stuff. And I would say in general, as a gamer, this is my favorite style of expansion. Uh, when an expansion just simply gives me more stuff to play with. I can just shuffle in a bunch of new cards, maybe some, um, some new factions if it's an asymmetric game. And my pick for that is Tapestry Plans and Ploys. I designed this almost purely as a more stuff expansion. You can see it on the back of the box. It gives you more civilizations. It gives you more tapestry cards. It gives you more um, uh, space tiles, and it gives you more landmark miniatures. I did add one new thing, um, and that is the, uh, the landmark cards. They are a new type of cards, but they are super, super easy to add to the game. It's very, very little rules overhead. But yeah, I love, I love more stuff expansions. Just, they're so easy to add, and if you design them well enough um, that they don't add complexity to the game, then you can really just shuffle them in and never unshuffle those components. You never have to separate out that component, those components when you're teaching the game to someone new. So yeah, Tapestry Plans Employees is my favorite Stonemaier more stuff expansion. The runner up is More Visitors. More Visitors is another expansion. That's an, uh, one of the first expansions for Viticulture where it's just a bunch more uh, visitor cards that you shuffle in and you never have to unshuffle. They are just in the game from now on. More Visitors. I would say the one thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about this though, when you're thinking about more stuff expansions, is that it is very difficult for manufacturers to exactly mimic the, uh, the ink darkness and the ink colors on the backs of cards. It's very, very difficult um, for them to do that. You, th you think it'd be easy, like they just use the same ink, same paper, but all these things are manufactured from a combination of natural and synthetic components. It's, it's very difficult for them to make them exactly the same every single time. And I think usually I think too much hubbub is made around a card not matching exactly. Because if you're just looking at the top card of the deck, you can't, you're not comparing it against another card of the deck. And so you can't really tell. 
um, if, it, if it is a new card or an old card. And even somehow, if you are able to determine that the top card of the deck is a uh, new card or, or an old card, um, what are you going to do with that information, really? Uh, as long as you, you design the expansion for, to be balanced with the original expansion, um, so what? I think it only actually matters in a game like Magic the Gathering, where you have your own unique deck of cards and you could gain a competitive advantage by, by being able to tell the, backs of the, the difference between the backs of the cards. It's right there in front of you. I think that is different. But when you're sharing a deck of cards with all other players, I really don't think it matters. But that is something to keep in mind. If it does matter in your game, a more stuff expansion might be difficult to pull off or it might be a time to include sleeves with, uh, with uh, printed backs. It says more stuff as one of my favorite categories of expansion. Uh, the next one is increased player count. So this is something that we see. We see so many games that are printed that uh, that play from between two and four players. That isn't what Stonemaier Games does. All Stonemaier Games go up to at least five players and pretty much all of them go down to one player. But there are many companies that don't do that and so they use expansions to add that solo play count and often another player. Uh, and my favorite pick, we do have a game that does this. We have a couple games that expansions that do this. But Between Two Castles does this. Um, Between Two Castles adds an eighth player to the game. Not that a seventh player game necessarily needed an eighth player, but it is nice. If you have a game that really does scale up, um, why not have it keep scaling up when you're adding more stuff to it via an expansion? And so I love that the Secrets and Terraria's expansion, in addition to doing other things, just the fact that it adds so many more tiles to the game lets you play with more players. And so that's what it does. We also have another game, um, Invaders from Afar. I know I'll mention that expansion a little bit later in the video. But uh, Invaders from Afar, an expansion for Scythe, increases the player count up to six and seven players. The precarious thing here, and the, so this is one thing that players were asking us to add six and seven players. Um, my intent for Invaders from Afar, which I had not designed when I had already designed Scythe, but I kind of I put some areas on the board where I thought those where where I could design new factions at some point. Um, my intent was to keep it a five-player game and just have players, uh, you know, have more variety of asymmetric factions to choose from. But players kept asking me for the option of playing up to six or seven players. And so I gave them the option of doing so. But that is a precarious thing because you are going to definitely add more downtime, um, more playing time if you do that. And so I, I try to keep that in mind when designing any expansion that, uh, that increases the player count. Um, fortunately, Between Two Castles plays simultaneously, and so if you have a game that plays simultaneously, you're not adding player time by adding additional players. Similar to more stuff expansions, the next category that I have is new stuff. So just adding, uh, not, not necessarily, so this is different than new play methods. So this is, Viticulture World is a completely new way to, to play Viticulture. New stuff is just more, you know, different stuff that, that adds to the game. Um, and I think that the classic example for this and one of our top rated expansions, one of my favorites, is Tuscany, the expansion for Viticulture. This adds three modules, Tuscany Essential Edition does. It adds an extended board with four full worker placement seasons instead of just the two that are in Viticulture. Um, uh, it adds the Special Workers expansion where you can decide to train uh, one of two different Special Workers. Throughout the game, they give you special abilities whenever they're placed. I love unique uh, worker, workers and worker placement games. And it also adds the Structures expansion, which is just another deck of cards, of structure cards, that uh, give you ongoing abilities and sometimes different action spaces, private action spaces for you to choose from. Um, I love Tuscany. I love how well, well it plays. I don't use Tuscany when I'm teaching Viticulture to a new player, but for people who know how to play Viticulture, Tuscany is a lot of fun for me to add. I, I love the flow of the extended board, and I love the option of the special workers and the, uh, the structure cards. Usually I play with the structure cards and not the special workers, but I do enjoy adding the special workers at certain times. Um, but yeah, more stuff. More stuff can often also add more complexity, and... Tuscany, uh, that's a different, I separated that into a different category. I think Tuscany does add some complexity to the game, especially in, in terms of the additional action spaces and decision spaces on the board. Um, but it doesn't add that much complexity. You could, to an experienced gamer, I think you could play Tuscany the first time, but I, I recommend playing with Viticulture for the first time. The other um, new stuff expansion that we have, and we, we have a couple of them, but the runner-up that I picked here is the Tapestry Arts and Architecture expansion, which adds a whole new advancement track, the Arts track, to the game. So uh, I really do enjoy that expansion, but Tuscany edges it out just by a little bit for me. 
The next category I have is increased depth and complexity. So this is, um, sometimes it means adding new stuff that adds complexity. Sometimes it j just means doing something to the game that adds complexity to it. And my pick for this one is Between Two Cities Capitals. I think you'll see what I mean after I describe this because Between Two Cities is like a 20, maybe 25 minute game at most. Simultaneous play, you're building two cities on either side of you in little four by four grids, tile drafting. Between Two Cities Capitals adds landmark maps to it. Um, in addition to a few other things, they add, uh, landmark maps are the most memorable for me. It also adds civic building tiles, which are just this wide variety of, of tiles that score in different ways depending on uh, different adjacent tiles that you have, um, and district cards and district scoring, scoring tiles. So this adds playing time to the game, uh, and it adds a much de deeper array of decision space to the game itself. Uh, because the, instead of just having seven different tiles, you have a ton of different types of tiles in the civic tiles, and the landscape mats, that's what they call it, I call them landmark mats, but the landscape mats really add, I think, to the beauty of the game on the tabletop, these were illustrated by Beth Sobel um, in terms of adding uh, kind of a, 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 an environmental feel to each individual um, city that you are building. Uh, I really like these. These are very simple to add in. The civic tiles add a little bit more complexity, but overall it adds to the playing time. So it kind of changes the shape of the game in a little bit of a similar way to new play methods. Even though you're playing the same way, the uh, you, you have a much wider decision space when you're playing with between two cities capitals um and it, it can feel a little bit like a, a different game because you're taking a game that typically plays in around 20 minutes and you're bumping it up to 35 or 40 minutes because of that increased depth or complexity the runner up here that i have is wingspan oceania um, which adds nectar to the mix and nectar has a very big impact on the game in oceania it kind of it, it does a couple different things but it definitely adds to the complexity of keeping track of this new resource that is both a wild resource that can score you some, some points at the end of the game if you spent a bunch of it um i really like what oceania adds uh but i, I think i lean slightly towards capitals as my pick for increased complexity and depth another type of expansion that you can design is a campaign expansion and that is exactly what we did with Scythe, The Rise of Fenris. Me and my co-designer, Ryan, worked on this game. This is an eight-game expansion that is completely resettable. It is not a legacy game. There are no permanent changes. Uh, but it is a campaign where you're progressing from story to, from kind of chapter to chapter, episode to episode. There's some branching paths that you can take along the way. Um, and each episode feels like Scythe, but also has some things that feel very different from Scythe. And at the end of it, you've you've unlocked all of these things. There, there are boxes to open, um, things that you aren't supposed to look at when you first open the box, both inside the tuck boxes and on different punch boards. Um, and so at the end of the campaign, you can either reset it and play another campaign if you want, or you can pick and choose your favorite modules that you've unlocked during the campaign and add them to future games of Scythe. Uh, I, I really like that method of, of campaign expansions. And uh, yeah, I, I, I love how this came together. This was, this was a big project that Ryan and Jakob and I worked on. And um, I love that it isn't too long. I, I love that it's just an eight game campaign, especially for a game that is a little bit longer when it gets to the table like Scythe. But, uh, but yeah, I, I love how this turned out. And I love games that offer the option of a campaign expansion. Um, I don't, I don't always, but I don't think I even really want a campaign out of the box for most games, but there are certain games that I want to play enough uh, that that I would love a little campaign expansion for. I love this for like Space Base, for Dune Imperium. I would gladly play a little campaign expansion for Dune Imperium. Uh, but yeah, Scythe, The Rise of Fenders is my pick for my favorite still my own campaign expansion. Some expansions add asymmetry. I think this is a great thing for expansions to add. So if sometimes an expansion, uh, a game doesn't have any asymmetry and the expansion adds asymmetry. Lost Ruins of Arnak is an example of this with their Expedition Leaders expansion. Sometimes an expansion also has asymmetry and adds even more asymmetry. We've done this with all of the, ta the tapestry expansions. We've added new civilizations. But I think my favorite pick, and I actually don't have the box here because it's mixed in with all my other side stuff, but is another side expansion, Invaders from Afar. I mentioned this earlier in terms of how it increases the player count, but we add new two new player mats and two new factions to Invaders from Afar, and it's just it's it they're very easy to add to the game. Um, they're just more factions to choose from, 
but uh, and so I like how streamlined the addition of it is to the game. But I love adding that extra asymmetry to the game. You've maybe you've played these, you've played all the different factions for size. Maybe you've played them multiple times. Now you can add new factions to play through and try to master in terms of uh, the Albion and Togawa expansions in uh, in Invaders from Afar. So I really like adding asymmetry to a game. My runner-up here is an example of a game that we have. Uh, my little side that has no asymmetry and the expansion pie in the sky does add asymmetry and I think a really clever way and that each player has um, their own unique little mat that they add to their player mat that does something different with the shared airship so you're all sharing this one airship that's moving around the board and you have this little little uh, asymmetric ability that interacts a little bit differently with that airship I think that's a pretty neat way to add asymmetry to a game as well um, and so that's my runner-up for asymmetry. Another type of expansion that I really enjoy in general are expansions that add a new location. A location might mean different things. It might mean a different map, a different board, like in Ticket to Ride um, or in Clank, it has a, a different board. But uh, for Stillmeyer Games, uh, the way that we've done this is in Wingspan, we've introduced new continents. And so the Wingspan European expansion is my favorite new location expansion in the Stillmeyer Games lineup. I love how easy it is to add the European expansion to the game. You just shuffle in the cards, the bonus cards, the bird cards. Uh, it has some, some gold tiles as well, has some new eggs. Uh, but it's so easy to add in. Um, but it also has a very unique feel. Elizabeth designed this expansion specifically around birds in Europe. And those birds have a different feel than some of the birds that you find in North America, including the addition of a whole new mechanism in the game where it's uh, end of round bonuses so there are birds that you can play where at the end of each round not just the round where you play them but every round uh if you have them on your your uh your player map they trigger they give you a special bonus or ability sometimes they're conditional sometimes not but i love this idea it has de this definite feel of engine building as wingspan does so well um throughout the game to get some of those birds out early so they trigger every round instead of just um at the final round or so so in terms of uh, location expansions, expansions that include, that explore different locations and have a slightly different feel to them based on those locations, I love Wingspan European, and I love this method of expansions in general, of adding a new location to the game. Last two categories. Uh, second to last category is fixing a problem. I think sometimes expansions address a specific problem um, with the core game. And usually I would say these are problems that are not so big that we haven't just scrapped the core game and made a new edition. Um, I think that's a little bit different. Rather, it's a perceived problem, and sometimes a data-driven problem, um, based on players who have played the game a lot and, and are looking for a little tweak, a little adjustment, something to in, in, maybe fix something that they've encountered, something that's overpowered, underpowered. And uh, I think Euphoria Ignorance is Bliss is a great uh, answer to that. This was essentially designed to address some stuff in Euphoria that works well, that work well, but I think they, it works even better now that you add Euphoria, uh, Ignorance is Bliss. It adds things like player mats. So you don't have player mats in the original game, and now here's a place to keep track of all your stuff and keep track of your own personal morale and, um, and knowledge, which normally you have to reach over to the board and do it on the board. It adds, I think this is the, the best new addition to the game that kind of fixes something. It adds a new antiques bazaar. And so instead of drawing randomly from the top of the deck to get artifact cards, you have a, a spread of artifact cards, a card river of different costs. It also, uh, Morton designed um, recruits, a whole new batch of recruits that are designed to play only in this expansion that... Uh, that are, I would say, balanced differently than the original recruits. And they also offer a wider, wider diversity of people in uh, among the recruits as well, because originally it was backer art where backers self-selected who was going to be on these cards. Now uh, we decide that we don't do custom art anymore because we can have more control over, over the diversity of people and better representation of people on the cards in the game. Also add some new market tiles, um, some bigger tokens so you never run out of commodities, things like that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I still love Euphoria, the core game, and how the core game works. Again, these aren't things that are so big that I thought that we needed to just make a new edition of Euphoria. But I do think Ignorance is Bliss uh, fixes some things in Euphoria or enhances them and makes them better. Um, and I appreciate that. I appreciate when, when any, any uh, publisher is willing to go back and look at expansion that way and say, hey, we, we, we can make this core game even better by addressing some of these things that fans of the game have brought up. 
The last one I have is a little bit of a cheat category because this isn't really exactly a category of expansion, but uh, the category is easiest to teach. So I, I think this is important when expansions are really, really easy to teach um, so that you don't feel like you're having to learn a whole new game. And my pick for that is Visit from the Rhine Valley, which also is kind of a fixing expansion. So Visit from the Rhine Valley is a separate new set of, vi of visitor cards that are designed around the idea that you can't get um, victory points from them. There are, there are a few that have victory points, but most of them are built around engine building, not gaining points. And so it fixes, it does fix the concern that some players had with the original vi uh, visitor cards that you get too many points from those visitor cards and you aren't actually encouraged to build up your vineyard all that much. Um, but this expansion, like a couple of the other more stuff expansions, is so easy to teach because all you are literally doing is setting aside the normal visitor cards and shuffling up these instead. There, there's, like, there's literally nothing else to teach from this expansion. Uh, and even within that, though, the cards offer some new abilities. Like they offer, there are some cards that say, uh, set this aside. Don't discard this after you play it. Set it aside. You have to pay attention to this at the end of the game. So it adds some some new stuff in that way. But all the text is on the cards themselves. I don't think you ever need. Do we even? I don't think we even include a rule book here. No, there's no rule book in uh, in Rhine Valley uh, because all the text that we needed to add, everything that we need to explain, is on the cards themselves. So I love that when an expansion is super easy to learn or teach. Um, it makes it more accessible, especially since many expansions you end up. Um, if you if you put the expansion in the game, it is more annoying to separate that expansion than than not to, to separate it. And so you often find yourselves, or I find myself, teaching games with expansions shuffled in to new players. Um, and so I, I want that expansion to be as accessible as possible to new players who are playing the, even the core game for the first time. So yeah, Visit from the Rhine Valley is my pick for, for easiest to teach among our expansions. I'd love to hear what you think of our expansions. If you have a different pick in one of these categories, or if you just want to discuss these different types of categories in general, or if there's a type of expansion in general that I that I missed, that I didn't cover here, I'd love to talk about that as well. Um, and really, anything goes for, for the discussion below in terms of discussing expansions, not just Stonemaier stuff, but expansions in general. I will link below to my previous video about my top 10 favorite expansions in general, not for Stonemaier games. So feel free to check that out as well if you're looking for a good expansion for one of your favorite games. Thanks.